This interactive training video is a basic introduction into mesh quality check and repair. Three important topics are addressed. First, general remarks about how to check and edit element quality. Second, how to detect free element edges. And third, how to check element normals. Clicking on the next button will start the video on checking element quality. Let's start with some general remarks about checking element quality. Let us open up the element check. Some general remarks. First, the check element panel controls the elements being displayed. Keep this in mind while reviewing larger models, where some parts may be disabled from the display. Secondly, in this panel you may only review one criteria at a time. Note, other more comprehensive check panels are available inside HyperMesh, but for the purpose of the starter videos, this panel offers enough functionalities. And now let us review the element length. Remember, we meshed this model with 3mm elements. However, as you will see, this does not necessarily mean that all the elements actually fulfill this criteria. As we created 2D elements, we need to activate the corresponding submenu 2D. Then, we enter our lowermost acceptable length value. Here, we say, for instance, 1mm. In order to activate the change in criteria, click on length. The failed elements, namely the elements with a length smaller than 1 mm, are highlighted. Some of them are directly visible, others may be hidden somewhere. Hence, it will be one of the objectives of the next steps to isolate the failed elements from the rest. If you prefer a colored image of the element quality, activate the highlighted toggle and select Assign Plot. Ray check the length again in order to create a colored element quality image for the length. This looks nicer doesn't it? At least, the colors help you in determining the lengths of the elements. As depicted by the legend, the red color is assigned to failed elements, or in other words, elements less than 1 mm in length. As you can see, we have many hot spots in this model. Do you have any ideas why we have failed elements? In order to isolate these failed elements, Click on the button, Save Failed. This will place the failed elements in a so-called user mark. Note, the elements still remain in their original collector, they are just marked or tagged. The message bar prompts the info, the failed elements have been placed in the user mark. This is an important message, as it confirms our preceding operation. What do you think, where do the failed elements occur? Are the failed elements positioned in the center of the surfaces or at its edges? To answer this question, let's disable all elements from the display. Next we activate the Find panel. Remember, the failed elements have been stored in the user mark. But how can we access the user mark? It is the command, Retrieve, which allows to reactivate the tagged elements from the user mark. The message bar tells us, that 44 elements have been found. By clicking on, Find, the failed elements will be visible on the graphics area. Now, small groups of failed elements are displayed. It becomes quite clear, that the failed elements are located along the edges, more specifically at the corners of the surfaces in order to improve or to fix the failed elements, it is important to add their neighboring elements to the display otherwise we may fix a failed element without knowing that we destroyed and attached good quality element at the same time. The Unmask Adjacent command, adds an additional row of elements attached to the failed elements. And once more, we are adding a second row, of elements to our current selection. Let us focus on the highlighted group of elements. Which are the failed elements? Let's check it again by using the color display like before. Isn't this striking? This is a very simple geometry, and still we see failed elements. 
What is causing the failed element? A helpful technique to better understand, actually to visualize the likely causes, is to temporarily shrink the element. Now it is obvious that the tiny little offset of the surface edges is causing the failed elements. Based on this understanding it is clear that we need to clean up the geometry. Instead of deleting elements, followed by geometry cleanup and remeshing, we jump right into the panel named Quick Edit. The Quick Edit panel is like a toolbox allowing geometry cleanup operations. This panel comprises a collection of functionalities you have been using in other panels before. For instance, toggle edge, filler surface, delete surfaces, or even adjust density. It is a very helpful panel to get you started. As stated before, we need to eliminate the edge offset. How would you solve this issue? Certainly, different solutions exist. For instance, you may merge the two geometrical points together. Alternatively you may simply suppress the green edges, or you may cut the surfaces. In the following slides, we will explore the two last options. You should know the toggle command already, as it was explained in the starter video about geometry. Based on the explanations given there, we are going to suppress the shared green edge by toggling it with the left mouse button. Did you notice the changes? The highly degenerated quad elements from before have been replaced by high quality elements. In fact, in one single operation, we suppressed the edge and remeshed the surface. In the next step, we plan to, I put it in quotes, suppress the tri element. Do you have any ideas on how to do it? Toggling edges would not really help, as the nodal density of the opposite edges are not the same. As discussed in the video about 2D meshing, adjusting the nodal density should be the answer here. Activate the Adjust, Slash Set Density menu. As within the interactive meshing panel, a left mouse button click will increase the number of nodes. A right mouse button click will do the opposite. As expected, changing the density helps in solving the tri element issue. Even though, the remaining tri-element doesn't hurt, we keep on adjusting the nodal density. This time, we are going to change the density at the lowermost edge. To better access the edge, we pan the model upward. The mesh looks nice and smooth. In fact, our mission is accomplished. Nevertheless, just for training purposes, we keep on going due to some very virtual reasons. We want to bring the suppressed edge back into the mesh. This is easily done, just activate the toggle edge menu and make a right mouse button click. The mesh will then be adjusted automatically. The mesh follows the reanimated green edge. By the way, the transition from two elements over to one element is because, link opposite edges is disabled. Otherwise, the tapered surface would have been meshed with two rows of elements. In the next step, we are going back to view the mesh in the fillet area. You may have noticed that the elements form a kind of bend. This is related to restrictions imposed on the elements by the green edges. Nevertheless, you can control the mesh flow by trimming the surface. Select the point where the trimming curve starts. Select the endpoint of the trimming curve. This functionality requests that both points belong to the same surface. Of course, Hypermesh offers other trimming operations which allow splitting of surfaces or solids in any way you want. We repeat this little exercise one more time. Now that the elements are fixed, we return to the normal view, namely by unshrinking the element. As you have seen in the previous slides, you can easily improve element quality by changing the underlying geometry. Most of the time, toggling edges, meaning suppressing edges, changing of nodal densities and proper splitting of surfaces is key to success. Some likely, or typical element check values are listed here. Please note, the values are just meant to give you an orientation. Also ask your colleagues for recommendations. For further reading and training exercises, Please view the tutorials available in the help menu. Also, don't forget the starter kit manual, which also contains information about this very topic.